transfer portal winners, Matt Green. Is that right? They are. Who I think they get? did a really good job. They did a really good job. They filled a bunch of needs. The thing about the portal now, when you're a Power 5 school and, like, with Hypel, he had to obviously spend a lot of time in the portal in year one because you had so many guys exit following the Pruitt stuff that you just had to replenish a lot of guys through the portal. Now, when you've had a couple of classes under your belt, they signed 25, 26, whatever it was, commits for this 2023 class. They're the deepest they've ever been in the high player. Now you kind of get to be a little bit more choosy in where you go. McAllen Castles, I think, is going to be a really good player from Cal Poly to get him as tight end. He'll start with Jacob Moore. Dante Thornton, huge. Track speed, super tall, made some plays, already experience, a lot of experience at Oregon. Like He fills that Jalen Hyatt role. Him and Squirrel White and then Brew McCoy is probably going to be your three starters. So you get another starter there because you lost a lot of talent, a lot of production. Cedric Tillman, Jalen Hyatt out the door in the NFL. Then you get Andre Karich from Texas. He was an offensive tackle there, probably going to play inside. He'll probably start for uh, for Carvin, who graduates and moves on to the NFL. That's a starter. John Campbell from Miami. Uh, he is a multi-year starter from Miami. Right tackle. Darnell Wright in the NFL draft. Campbell played with uh, Joe Milton in high school. Already there. Then you get Keenan Peely, older kid from BYU, married, a lot of experience, was a great player two years ago. At BYU, tore his ACL, did not have as great of a year. He's rehabbing, all that kind of stuff. But you lost um, Jeremy Banks to the pros. Hey, another just guy who you can start next to Aaron Beasley next year. Plug and play. Should be good. And then the last one, um, Gabe Judy Lolly from BYU as well. He played at Vanderbilt for a little bit, four-star kid. He's going to probably start at corner. Like, you just got a bunch of starters to fill some gaps to the NFL and... I think all are going to be pretty good players. Um, some might pop more than others, but I'm very impressed by like how targeted Tennessee was just filling NFL gaps with these guys. And I think they're all going to play and they're all going to be pretty talented guys um, who should uh, contribute as this 2023 class and 2022 class continues to develop and uh, get ready to fill those slots because that's the goal, right? When you're at Georgia, like you have to like you have to have these stop gaps for these guys to be in the conditioning program, the nutrition program, the weight training for a couple years, and then they're ready to play. So Tennessee's closing in on that for a lot of these guys, but you still need some veteran depth across the country to fill out your last little bits uh, for the portal. And I think Tennessee did a really good job. Uh, and I think if you're depth. truly going to be one of the contenders in college football, you're never going to be in the top five winners of the transfer portal because yeah, you, you shouldn't have to get six, seven, eight key players out of the portal. Like mm -hmm. from that, like that same respect, like Georgia, I think has gotten three guys out of the portal. It's, it's like 80 Mitchell transfers and you brought in two, obviously Rob Rod Thomas has, you know, potential legal stuff going on, but assuming, you know, just with none of, with none of that on the table, it's like Georgia brought in two of the top three or four receivers in the portal Mm. As well as like you lost a, a Jaheim Singletary, a, a, four, a four star, borderline five star corner from the from the 2022 class, and you you get Smoke Bowie, who's a 2022 borderline four star, five star corner. So it's like you for the the guys you lost, you basically made up for, and and you look at Georgia, obviously at coming off two national titles, not a lot of weaknesses on the program period and, and what they did have they they filled in the in the does portal, that feel but... weird when you say that out loud coming off two national titles for your team does that not just feel weird saying out loud absolutely man it's <laughs> it's that's why georgia fans if, if you see them on twitter that's why they don't know how to act it's mm -hmm. uh we were, we're not we're used to being uh, super close also rocking my world series gear uh for the braves it's like mm -hmm. just like, experiencing all these championships it's uh it, it's definitely something to get used to but um but yeah, it's it's a it's a weird spot to be in when you're when you're number one because mm -hmm. you don't you don't necessarily know that you have to get better to win it all again, right? It's like when when if you you finish top five, you finish top ten, you know you got to do X Y Z to get better. It's like when you're number one. Well, considering Georgia won the national championship by fifty eight points, obviously they beat Ohio State by one. Mm -hmm. It's like they could have been a lot worse and potentially uh, still won the national championship. So. Uh, the 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 margin for error is a, is a little bit different, obviously, when you're when you're that talented. But um, it's it's definitely a, something to get used to. But yeah, Georgia, 
I, I wasn't going to say Georgia was one of my winners. I just uh, I thought of that while you were talking about Tennessee. But, mm. but yeah, Georgia definitely just filled a couple spots. But another one, LSU is one mm. because, I mean, they signed – I mean – like I said, for what for whatever these rankings are worth, I still don't know what exactly to do with these with these transfer portal rankings. But mm-hmm. LSU is the number one class according to twenty four seven with eleven guys out of the portal, eight mm-hmm. of which are four stars. And so I think that's I think that's big for LSU. Like they just won the SEC West year one of Brian Kelly, like way ahead of schedule, and to now go get some guys like that could potentially contribute from day one, they along got with signing four like day a top one five. corners. They got four day one starter corners: Denver Harris from T uh, from A and M, Zay Alexander, Deuce Chestnut, and J K Johnson. And they signed the sixth ranked class in the country this year yeah. too. So it's like LSU. Like there was so much made of Brian Kelly fitting the culture. It's like the culture is football. Yeah. And if you can be a good football coach, the guys are gonna are gonna come to play to LSU. Are they? So. I think they're the favorites to go back to back, right? I mean, Winning right now, it's hard for me to say Alabama's the favorite. I think there's just so much. Don't we like LSU more? more? I think I'm a bigger I, on LSU right now. I think I am as well. I think LSU. I mean, we usually see that kind of uptick in year two of any head coach, especially a good one. And um, you know, with with Jaden Daniels coming back, LSU's definitely got a a lot of reasons to be optimistic. Butte came back too, right? Yeah, he did. He is coming back. I mean, I think LSU is the favorite um, to win the SEC West again. And I think it would not surprise me in the least that if we get Georgia and LSU both in the college ball playoff next year. Wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. I could see it. I mean, LSU still did, you know, they had, they had some bad showings last year. I'll, I'll, year one, though. They won the West and 10 wins in year one. Brian Kelly, I don't know, man. I think Oregon is another one that I've been um, pleased with in the portal. I think you got two starters from Alabama. Oh, in, in the, the portal. portal. I thought you were going with the CFP. I was like, oh, I sorry. don't know about and that. Then, yeah. And then um, Jordan Birch as well from South Well, Carolina. hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you can, like, was there anyone else from, because they added a bunch. Like, basically LSU, all they got was Aaron Anderson offensively. But then everybody else is defense. Like, they clearly had an idea of, like, Brian Kelly was like, we're going to load up on the defense. We're LSU and we're going to, we're fine. We're fine with their skill talent on offense, and they just – skill players already want to come to LSU, right? And there's already so many in their backyard, the Odell Beckhams of the world. But, like, they really filled out the rest of this defense. I am I think if you're an LSU fan, you're very, very excited about year two for Brian Kelly. I think the, the, the ceiling is pretty, pretty high for this group. Like, they could win the title next year. It would not – like, would that floor you if Jaden Daniels had a Heisman-type year and LSU won the title? No, I I think I we said last week. I think that yeah. was, that's a solid like um, that's an early good bet as far I, as yeah. yeah as far as long shot Heisman. But I mean, I think as soon as the national championship odds come out, LSU's got to be up there, right? Like top yeah. five, top ten. I would as, think so. As, as far as yeah, as far as long shot, I mean, not super long shot, but just like odds fun enough to play. I think mm. LSU is definitely um, they're definitely a team that's that's got a shot for sure. Um. Matt Green, you mentioned Oregon. Why is Oregon a winner for you? I like, um, like I said, they got two Alabama starters mm. uh, in at a portal with uh, Treshawn Holden and um, who is it? Jackson, the corner. I'm, I'm blanking on his name off the top of my head. Oh, Kyrie um, Jackson. Yeah, and then and then also Jordan Birch out of South Carolina. I that was huge. Oregon, I think that's the biggest I, one. Is Jordan and I Birch don't from think South Oregon Carolina. had a lot of weaknesses either. So no. getting Bo, having Bo Nix come back, I feel like Oregon seems like that team that definitely will have college football playoff hopes like coming mm-hmm. next season. Bo Nix is back. I mean, yeah, there's talent everywhere um, and, for sure. And it's been well documented how many of the good teams in college football are, are replacing their quarterbacks coming mm-hmm. into next season. Oregon is not one of those. So that right there gives them a, a little continuity that a lot of the other big time programs aren't going to have. UCLA is a winner for me. Chip Kelly has done a really good job. He's another one of these coaches who's done a really good job. Um, even if recruiting hasn't been as high as he may have wanted it to be, he gets college Lee from Kent state um, who leaves obviously because his coach just left to go be the OC at uh, Colorado put up bonkers numbers for Kent state last year. We'll see how it translates to the power five level, but like, you lose DTR, you have Dante Moore waiting in the wings, you flip him from Oregon, and Dante Moore is going to be ready to go year two um, out of the gate, but you get a good bridge guy 
who can still put up big numbers in Chip Kelly's scheme. Um, you get a great player running back in Carson Steele from Ball State. You get uh, Cal's good wide receiver, J. Michael Sertiment. You get Cal Foyle, Kyle Ford from your rival, USC. I don't know. I like a lot of these guys. You get Ke- Keanu Williams from Oregon. I don't know. I, I look at what uh, UCLA has done, and I'm very intrigued by uh, what Chip Kelly... I mean, he's Chip Kelly's just solid, man. Like, he's just keeping this thing humming in, uh, in brewing country. Oh, 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 o